So this is lab number nine on WebLogic security. So in this lab, you're going to learn how to secure access to the admin server using an administration port. We're also going to go over creating resources within a security realm, such as users, groups, an authentication and auditing provider. And then we're going to secure an application using roles and policies that we'll define. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to continue working with the WebLogic server, server example domain. That's the WL underscore server domain. And that domain right now only has a single admin server. So it's, it makes it, and it has applications deployed to it. So it makes it pretty easy to experiment with. So go ahead and open up a terminal window. In the first part of this lab, we're going to actually enable the administration port. And this is actually fairly straightforward in a development environment. So let's go ahead and start up the admin server for the WL server domain. Okay, so once the admin server starts up, it's going to launch that example web apps application. Go ahead and minimize the browser for now. We'll deal with that later. Um, so one thing I want to point out, now that the admin server is running, if you remember during one of our earlier labs on starting up the server for the first time, notice these network channel statements here in the server output for the admin server. WebLogic is listening on a variety of listen addresses and port numbers. Well, in this case, we only have the one port number, but there are but there are actually multiple listen addresses. So we can see here there's 127.001, and then there's the IP address of my machine, and I think this is an IPv6 uh, type network address here. So when you don't define a listen address for a WebLogic server, WebLogic will bind to any available um, address. So in my environment, I have IPv6, IPv4, and and uh, localhost uh, and local IP address. And so I just want to point that out because when we configure the admin server administration port, we're going to see something different. Hmm. So go ahead and open up your browser. Mine was already open because of the example web app. And go ahead and navigate to the admin console. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define the port number for the admin server. So to do that, under environment, go to servers and click on the admin server. So on this page, you're familiar with this page by now, it's where we can define the listen port and the SSL listen port for the admin server. Right now we have only the unsecure listen port defined as 7001. But if you scroll down, at the very bottom there's this advanced section. If you click on this, it'll expand and show you a bunch of advanced configuration options for the admin server. So you can see here the local administration port override allows you to override the default admin port. And so why would you want to override the default admin port? Well, if I have multiple WebLogic servers running on the same machine and they're all if they're using the same administration port number, you're going to have port binding conflicts. So for the lab, I'm going to use 9001 because I intend on using 9002 and 3 for the managed servers that we're going to create later on. So go ahead and hit and enter in 9001 and click save. So at this point, we've only defined the port number for the admin port. We have not yet enabled it. Defining it does not enable the admin port. But before I enable it, if you recall, one of the requirements for configuring, for enabling the domain wide admin port was SSL. You have to have SSL configured for all your WebLogic servers in your domain if you're going to use the admin port. So SSL 
is configured on a server by server basis, a WebLogic server by server basis. So as you can see on the admin server, there are these tabs under configuration named key stores and SSL. So go ahead and click on key stores. Key stores defines the location of the identity and trust key stores. So you can see here that the admin server is already configured with the demo identity and demo trust. And that's because that this is that this domain was created in development mode. Had you created this domain in production mode, I don't believe these options will be filled in. However, in production mode, you certainly would not want to use these demo identity and demo trusts. These key stores and certificates that are contained within them are included with every WebLogic product. Everybody else in the world that has WebLogic has access to these demo trust and demo identity uh, certificates. So do not use them in a production environment. But you can see here that we can define the type of key store. So I can click the change button and you can see that demo identity and demo trust is actually an option here, but that there's custom identity, command line trust, custom identity and custom trust, and custom identity and Java standard trust. These are these specify clearly a custom identity key store, but different various forms of trust key stores. I can specify them at the command line. I can specify a custom trust key, key store or a Java standard trust key store. So for the lab, we're not gonna go through creating self-signed certificates and the key stores. That's out of scope for this lesson. We're gonna go ahead and use the demo identity and demo trust. And click cancel since it's already selected. And you can see here that the location to that key store is already specified. So there's a security directory underneath WebLogic server that has the demo identity and demo trust if you wanna go take a peek at it. There is a passphrase to access both key stores. If we scroll down a bit further, you'll see some additional information. So there's nothing to do here on this page. I just wanted to show you that key stores are indeed configured. So the SSL tab defines the SSL settings for this server. So by default, when you configure key stores under the key stores tab, the identity and trust locations is defaulted to that key store. And then further down, we see this identity section. The private key that is in the identity key store typically will have a passphrase on it in order to access it. So you would specify that here. And then there's the trust section, which just identifies where the, certif where the certificate authority is located, and that's in the default trust store. So under the advanced tab, and this is important, the first thing you'll see here is this host name verification. Host name verification, at least in terms of the BEA host name verifier. Now BEA was the company that owned WebLogic prior to the acquisition. Oracle bought BEA for its WebLogic product. And you can see the hold over the left over here, so they still reference BEA here. But the host name verifier is used to verify where that certificate is coming from. So, so if a, if a server is acting as a client and initiates a request using a certificate, an SSL certificate, the BEA hostname verifier will check to see whether or not the identity in the certificate matches the hostname of the requester. And so if they differ, WebLogic will, will reject the request. Now you can disable this, you can turn this off. Sometimes folks have have difficulties with generating certificates to match the host name. And so in development environment, you can disable this to ease your pain, but in production environment, you should really have this, <clears throat> this checked. A lot of times when we create X509 certs for a server, the common name in the certificate should match the fully qualified domain name of the server that's gonna contain that certificate. And so let's we'll scroll down a little bit and take a look at the two-way client cert behavior option. This defines whether or not one-way or two-way SSL is going to be used. So it may not be obvious looking at this, but if I click on the, on the, the list here, we see three options, and they all revolve around client certs. 
So in one way SSL, if you remember back to the lesson when I was talking about the SSL diagram, during a one-way SSL connection, the server presents the client with a certificate, and it's the client that validates the cert. So for instance, if you're accessing a website that is secure using HTTPS, that site will present your browser with a certificate, and if that certificate doesn't have a proper CA defined, or there's something wrong with the cert chain, for that certificate, that browser is going to pop up an error message and say that there's something around the certificate, it's an untrusted connection, or the, the verifier, the signer is unknown. You've, I'm sure you've seen those error messages before. So that's one way SSL. Two way SSL is when the server sends you a cert to verify and then you send the server your certificate. So the client sends the server a certificate to be verified as well. So the first option here, client certs not requested. The server is not going to request a client cert. This is one way SSL. Client certs requested, but not enforced. So the server will ask the client if it has a certificate. If it does, great. It will attempt a two way SSL handshake. If the client does not have a certificate, that's okay it will establish a one-way SSL connection. So this supports both one-way or two-way SSL. However, it does not enforce two-way SSL. And then the last option, the third option here, client certs requested and enforced. This mandates two-way SSL on this server. So since we don't have any personal certs to load into our browser, let's go ahead and leave the client certs not requested checked. So I don't believe we changed anything on this page. So, so that's it for this. Let's now go ahead and enable the domain wide admin port. So to do that, click on the name of your domain under domain structure. <clears throat> now we haven't seen this before yet, but by clicking on the name of the domain, we get access to domain wide configuration settings. And so on the configuration tab, the first thing we see is this checkbox for enable administration port. So go ahead and check that. And you'll see that the default port is 9002. So every server in this domain is going to default to 9002 unless we override it like we did with the admin server. With the admin server, we specified 9001. So we can leave this as is because we're going to override it on a server by server basis. One more thing to note on securing web logic domains is production mode. We can actually enable production mode for this domain. So typically when you're in the configuration wizard, you're given the option to enable or uh, dev mode or production mode. One way to flip that is to specify it here as well. But let's stick with the development mode because if we go into production mode, we're going to get caught up in some uh, specialized security and tuning parameters that may affect uh, the lab. So, so leave this the way it is. Leave it unchecked. Enable administration port and click save. So you'll see that the message up here that says all changes have been activated. No restarts are necessary. So let's go ahead and switch back to the terminal window to look at the server output. Now, as I mentioned before we logged into the admin console, that there were these default network channels, okay? And so we have four of them. And they're each listening on a listen address and the 7001 port. When we enabled the admin port, we see, there's, there's a few messages that we see. One, the first thing that we see is that the admin server has loaded the demo identity and demo trust key stores. So you can see that here with these two messages. Okay. So anytime that you have SSL enabled and you start up your server, you'll, you'll want to see uh, that WebLogic is indeed loading the identity and trust. But that wasn't really what I wanted to show you. So notice here that there is another network channel now. This is a separate thread. 
and we have a default administration network channel that's listening on the same listen addresses as the default network channel. However, notice the port is now 9001. And so this network channel, this default administration channel, is for any and all administration tasks. And to prove that, let's go back to the browser to the admin console and click anywhere in here. You should get this error message. This require admin traffic attribute set to true can only be made through an administration channel. So what we've attempted to do was invoke a function within the admin console, which is considered admin traffic. And since we're connected to 7001, if you look in my address bar, we're still on 7001, and WebLogic rejected this request. So when we configure the domain wide admin port for the admin server, for the entire domain actually, as I said, all the admin traffic must now go over the admin port. So let's go back and log into the admin console using the admin port. Now recall that this is HTTPS now, since we're using SSL to connect. If I just use HTTP and try to connect to the admin port slash console, I'm going to get an error. Make sure to stick HTTPS in front of it. So you will get a pop-up you should get a pop-up from your browser stating that the identity can't be verified or there's something wrong with the certificate or it's an untrusted connection so accept the warning or the exception and move on so in safari i just have to click continue in firefox or chrome it'll be a slightly different so look now that i've got this little secure icon indicating that we are secure over ssl Okay, so go ahead and log in as WebLogic. Not now. So from now on in future labs, when we perform any administrative functions against this WebLogic server domain, we're going to have to use the new uh, admin port and secure URL. Okay, so now that that's done, the next part of the lab is going to create a custom authentication provider.